Welcome to Uninfluenced, people. We took a break last week. I was stressed out. I was all in my own mental fuckery. Uh, and then I fucked around and we had a baby. Um, Matt and I did. Yeah. He's a cute little bastard. We couldn't decide what to have, so we fucking had one with two dicks. That way he could fuck all that, the That bitches. way he can fuck himself. Yeah. Twice as bad. Yeah. Twice as hard. Uh, yeah, so we're back. We're going to do a little bit of questions and answers, get into that, and uh, talk about what went on over the last couple of weeks. Uh, what all did you have going on? Man, not a lot, really. Just uh, working a dog, get, uh, getting one ready to, to deliver here shortly, another one. And uh, just been doing some drive. Been doing a lot of riding, actually. The, um, the BMW M1000 RR that... Uh, that I've got here, gotten here recently. I've been putting a fair bit of miles on and just really getting to know, getting to know that bike and playing around with it and having fun and a um, little bit of driving, getting to know the seven six five uh, a little better, and uh, came to some conclusions in the last uh, couple of Saturday morning drives that we've done on that. So to be to be continued on that, but there's some shortcomings on it that for me, um, you know changes how i feel about it no two ways no two ways about it but yeah anything new i always call it the <clears throat> i guess it's the girlfriend phase when you first get with a chick they're perfect yeah. you know it's the same <laughs> when chicks first get with dudes mm -hmm. you know you're both going to give you the best you can give and then that shit starts to wear off by about the fourth date to where you're like <laughs> you remember them steaks we were eating you know, McDonald's is made with beef too, right? Yeah. We could also get those. You know that, right? You you like potatoes. <laughs> they also have French fries. Yeah. So, you know the bread they bring before that's called a bun. Yeah. You know, it's just. It, and I do the same thing. I'll get a new car, new truck, new motorcycle, and you ride it, drive it, fuck with it for a couple weeks, and then the little fucking hiccups start coming in the shit that you're like i don't know if i like that yeah. and then that i don't know if i like that part starts to get bigger and bigger in your mind yeah and it for me it becomes a fuck this thing yeah you know and it's we i think we both kind of struggle with finding the what we call the perfect fucking motorcycle car or truck yeah i'm not gonna lie when i after having the the kid i jumped in uh because i had her tahoe fucking around and i jumped in my truck the other day to go get some stuff and i was like god damn i missed this fucking thing <laughs> and it it's rare because hell the truck i got does fucking everything it massages your back fucking heats your back does everything it's a white truck that no one knows what the fuck i'm in you know yeah. i can just get in it haul ass and yeah no thinking about it just throw your shit in amen uh the m1000 i got some questions on that yeah. Out of all your bikes, because right now you have, is it five? Not counting, well, maybe six. Mm -hmm. How many do you have? I mean, that, that I actually have in my possession right now, only three. Um, I've got the, well, four, sorry. Um, I've got the Superleggera, the M1000, the Aprilia, and the Challenger. And then the other ones still... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't technically cool. have the. There's actually two two new ones coming. Two. Yeah, they're actually I guess three technically, but. Oh no! So there's I know about one that I know of. I'm that's the, I'm that's the August one, right? Yeah. So there's one I don't know about. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I need to decide today whether or not I'll show you a picture of it before. Uh, you know who am I kidding? It's the fucking Ducati uh, Hyper Motard 950 SP. Have you seen? Oh, that? the one we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the V4S, the new 2022 Ducati V4S 1100. It's got some new aero, a little bit of tweaking on the engine, and uh, a little better just kind of components, electronics, than the 2021 V4S, which is, you know, the V4S P that I had, which was an amazing bike. Um, Still my favorite out of all the Ducati yeah. so far, looks-wise. Yeah. Um, I've got the second version of that coming in August, but the, the new V4S that that platform uh, is based off of, that came in last week. It's getting the exhaust and radiator guards and tail tidy and all the 
shit that you'd want done with it right out of the gate. Uh, so it'll, it'll probably be ready uh, when this airs. Actually, it'll, it'll probably be that that day that it gets picked up. But the uh, I, I've read and seen from a lot of people that the the hyper motard, which looks like a fucking college kid's bike, honestly, mm-hmm. it, it's like a cross between a a dirt bike and and an, not even an enduro, more like a like a super naked kind of uh, or just naked. You know, like the the uh, MT series and in, in Yamaha's the MT07, MT09. Yeah. I don't even know what the fuck you'd call that. It has that sport bike, almost sport bike appearance and feel. Kind of looking at it, yeah. picture wise. Then that what was that? The triple S. Uh, yeah, I yeah. hated that thing. In the straight like naked sport bike. Yeah, so it's like a cross between a a, a straight up dirt bike and like an MT09 type of thing. Uh, it's a 950 cc. About 114 horsepower, uh, but a ton of torque, and I've watched a ton of reviews on it. Um, you know, and everybody that I've watched review it talks about how underrated of a bike it is, and how it's like this is the funnest bike I've ever ridden, and it's just kind of a hooligan run around town, jump on quick, and not you know have to get mentally prepared to do the way you do on a leader bike or above, and uh, or sport bike for that matter. And so I, I thought about trying it out. There's a used one at the local Ducati dealer here that um, it basically has everything done to it. It's got extra fucking carbon on it. It's got a full, uh, I think it's pronounced Termagione. I I always fuck that pronunciation up, but. uh, Watch the video on that. Yeah. uh, Termoji. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. But the, uh, it's got that, the full exhaust two to one on that. uh, And Ducati makes a special ECU map to accommodate that that uh exhaust for that bike so it's basically totally set up it's got like 13 miles on it you know uh, so it's just barely used mm-hmm. uh, so i was thinking about getting that and trying it out as just kind of a run around town to fuck off bike plus it's uh i think it's good for rider development in yeah. in helping develop skills so we'll see but anyway motorcycles have kind of turned into something i'm more passionate about even than cars i think in a large to a large degree because of the amount of traffic around here is that it's it's very rare that you can jump in a car and go enjoy it, you know, for, for what that type of car is. You know, it, it really makes me want to just pare it down to, to having one fast car that I enjoy driving that I just drive probably on the weekends or later at night when you can actually go enjoy it because otherwise I, I don't. You know, it's, it's so hard to find a time where you're not just sitting in traffic wall to wall even around here. To where it's like, what's the fucking point, you know? Whereas on a bike, you can still have fun, even in traffic, because you can split lanes and and just being on a bike is is fun by itself. Even if you're doing thirty miles an hour, like you don't have to be ripping your face off to enjoy riding a motorcycle. I think it's because it's every there's no protection. It's you're more aware yeah. of your surroundings, you're feeling. What's yeah, you happening. feel the wind. I mean, it's just uh, yeah, it's a different experience. I mean, to me, the best analogy i can use it's kind of like flying a plane versus jumping out of one yeah you know uh flying it obviously is is like driving a car versus jumping out is more like being on a motorcycle it's just like this 360 degree freedom awareness feeling that uh, that's pretty special but okay so here's my question and it's not going to be totally fair because you don't have the new v4s everything you have right now motorcycle wise and even have had have had everything because you i would say right now back ownership you have way more experience than i do uh i may have rode more miles but you definitely own more yeah. bikes uh okay all the bikes you've owned in your possession even rode if there's a couple you've rode and yeah. weren't yours all of them guy comes gun to your head i'm taking every one of these motherfuckers but one <laughs> Which one are you taking? I'm I'm gonna shoot him. Well, I know first, <laughs> but the the I've yeah. there's a YouTuber that does reviews and yeah. he does it. Okay, aliens come down, yeah, and they take all your stuff and you you get you get to keep one. Yeah, I'm like yeah, we're not much of an alien fucking yeah. place. Uh, for me, it, it would probably be the M. Uh, I would say the the Aprilia is a close second, but it is a second because of the the steering. Um, one of the interesting, I think, di- dichotomies about the Aprilia is that it, the chassis is is incredible and the steering is really really heavy. Which, 
uh, in some ways is awesome because it gives you a ton of confidence to, mm-hmm. to really push the bike harder than I would a bike that, that is more, you know, flickable from a steering and handling standpoint. So it's a double edged sword that way, the planability and the confidence that you get takes away from the fun of being able to, to be uh, precision oriented in how you steer it. Um, what I really like about, but, but what to me, the, the Aprilia is a really, really fucking good bike though. It's smooth. It rides well. It's easy to ride. The, the biggest, um, thing that I like about that bike is how much fucking power it has everywhere. Um, you know, doing 60 to 130 and top end stuff, it's not as impressive as the BMW or, uh, even the, and especially the, the SP, like the SP is actually the fastest of, of all the bikes that I've had with, uh, with the Bren tune on it. It's a low, low three 60 to 130 bike, whereas everything else is high three or low four. But, um, for me and my riding ability, it doesn't really matter. They're all really fast when, when yeah. you're getting up, up. When you're in a leader bike, I mean, yeah, on the street, it's going to outperform you. <clears throat> yeah, and, and and to me, all of those bikes uh, up when you're pushing it at, at the top end of the, the rev range and speed range, they're all the same for me because I, I'm not good enough to – to ride it where you're pushing the bike, you know, for a guy that is, they're going to notice a big difference between the bikes uh, up at that level. I I don't, you know, to me, the, the, the Ducati, the, the Aprilia, the BMW, they all feel about the same up top to me. They're all really fucking fast, you know, faster to where like, I'm not, you know, gunning the fucking throttle as, as fast as it will go, you know, second gear. Yeah. So, (laughs) Oh yeah, it's just in second gear, right? No, but when I actually get out into into third, fourth, or even fifth gear, um, but the so for me, it's it's really more about you know the the amount of torque and grunt and, and accessible power and torque that you have at lower rev ranges, and the Aprilia hands down has way more fucking power down low than everything else. Even the SP, uh, the SP was close, but you know, I mean, right out of the fucking gate, that Aprilia when you fucking give it. It just has loads of fucking torque down low, which when you're just riding around the street is what makes that the most fun. Mm-hmm. You know, so riding around town, like if the Aprilia just had lighter steering, that would probably be my favorite bike. Um, but <clears throat> all things considered now and, and having spent time, uh, you know, I, I put almost 4,000 miles on the Aprilia. I've put almost 2,000 on the M now, um, you know, and I've got, I, I probably only have seven or 800 on the super Legera. There's almost 1500 on it, but, uh, old T Rippy's put, put a fair number of miles on that, that fucking beast. So, um, but yeah, I, th- I think, you know, right now, all things considered, I, I would probably take the, the M as, as a sole bike, even over the Aprilia because, um, the steering is just so much better for, for me at least Yeah. in, in what I enjoy, um, you know, handling and steering wise, it's, it's more comfortable. The seating position is, is better. Uh, it's smoother and it's, it's actually a little faster again, where it's faster to me is kind of irrelevant they're both stupid fast. Um, uh, but so, yeah, I would say that, uh, as of right now, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious because I've rode most of your bikes, and I just do the little loop we fuck with. To me, the most fun was the SP, but I, I haven't took the M on that loop. I just yeah. did the the short loop. But the SP was the bike that I think when we stopped, I was at one of the gas stations. I was like, holy fuck, because yeah. I think you had to catch me too there. That motherfucker – yeah. It was just stupid the way you could throw it around. Yeah. And uh, I think the way we ride around here, uh, unless we did more highway riding, in all honesty, the bike we could get the most out of would be like a 600 or a 750 because you can push its limits more in yeah. those smaller yeah. areas. But it's just so much fun to have a fucking leader bike and beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the M to me is – looks wise to me it goes the super legera the sp and the m yeah and in that order yeah uh if the s p had the or if the super legera had the sp fucking look man 
Yeah. I'd be borrowing that bitch from you all the time. <laughs> but, Man. I mean, you you could make it look that way with... Uh, yeah, change the fairings and or wrap it. Yeah, I mean, to me, wrapping it would be the probably the easiest way to do that. But Because uh, I've seen, you know, people, they've made the, the SL, like, Lamborghini Shark Blue or some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a couple of one-off Super Legeras that are paint schemed, uh, totally different. But I don't have any interest in doing that. I kind of like to just leave them alone. I will say that the M is in person. Um, it, it's in my opinion, it is on par with the Super Legera. In pictures, it does not come across that way. The Super no. Legera photographs really well. The M, it, it, you know, you don't see a huge distinction between an M and an S1000 in pictures. In person, it's night and day difference. Oh, yeah, some know. of the options that come with it. Yeah. I mean, we were just sitting there that day. We were going to go ride, and then the wind's fucking like 40-mile-an-hour yeah. gust. Yeah. We just fucked around at the gas station, and we're just looking at the upgrades that are standard yeah. on that bike versus everything else. You, That's one of the few bikes, other than the Super Legera, that you can sit there and see what you're spending your money yeah. on. Versus some of these bikes you spend it and you're like, yeah. where the fuck's that $5,000? Yeah, and that, to me that is one of the downsides of Aprilia. They've, it seems like over the last couple of years, each year their bikes have actually looked worse. Like they, they look cheaper than they did, you know, a few years ago. The And I would say like 2020, in my opinion, is the best looking Aprilia out there. 21, the, the year that I have, uh, it's it's okay, but it does look kind of cheap in a lot of places. The 2022s look like they've taken 10 steps back. Yeah. Like, the, it's a weird, like, charcoal grayish black that just looks really cheap, like cheap, plasticky, shitty, low quality. Like, there's nothing distinctive about it. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, honestly. Like, that 2020 with the, with the Italian... Uh, kind of touches on a on an otherwise mostly black silver and carbon bike looks fucking nice. That's the one I was looking at yeah. before I bought mine, right? Yeah, and I was back and forth on. Yeah, those. like if I was gonna, uh, I, I'm gonna sell the uh, my Aprilia. If I, if I went back to it, I probably would get a 2020 and not a 21, honestly, because I think it's a better looking bike. But yeah, um, but yeah, I, you know, overall they're they're all nice. Uh, I wish like if you could put. The, the grunt that the Aprilia has in the BMW, um, it'd be game over, you know. Yeah. But I think that's the difference in a like a V and an N line. For sure. The N lines, you know, they're just they're yeah, more top got, end. Yeah, it's got way more up top and and then the V's are just grunty motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. Where I think Ducati stands out above most of them is that single sided swing arm. Where especially when you can take pictures of it because it just looks like it's art. Yeah. You know, sitting still. Yeah. It's hard. When they're going down the road, I mean, you really got to know what the fuck you're looking at yeah. to look at bikes. But, yeah, yeah I was very curious because looking at the M1000, especially yours, if you don't get the competition package, which I didn't know till the other day was a fucking thing, because uh, there's the M1000 and there's the M1000 competition. Yeah. And the competition actually has more shit on it. Yeah. And it's what? It looks like it should. Or yeah, it's, I want to say it's like Four or five thousand more, I think. Yeah. But the one, the non competitions, you can damn near not even find. Oh, I know. But the competitions are yeah. everywhere, or not everywhere. Yeah, they're they're at least available. Yeah, I mean, you can find those. I mean, there's not a lot of them, which I, I do like too. Is that there's only five hundred of of the M one thousands. I mean, I've had three S one thousands, and uh, the third one I had for a couple of days. I put two miles on it and sold it because I got the M in at the same time. And uh, I was just like, whichever one I like better, that's what I'll keep and sell the other one. And immediately riding the M, um, I noticed, I was like, holy shit, this thing's way fucking better. And what what I don't understand is I've seen a number of reviews that compare the S1000M package, you know, the, the red, white, and blue one with the, the carbon wheels, and it's closer to the M1000 and the M1000. And every single one of them is like, yeah, it's disappointing. It's not worth the extra money. Just get an S and I'm like... Bullshit. I could I couldn't disagree more. You know, may, maybe it's because I'm not a professional fucking track rider, and maybe they don't notice a difference. I, I would think it would be the opposite that they would notice differences more than I would. But I, to me, it feels vastly different. Yeah, I mean, vastly fucking different. The way that it that it rides, that it handles, that it shifts, that it fucking revs up. I mean, like I notice a ton of difference between the two. And to me, there's no comparison. Like the M is absolutely worth the extra money for it a yeah. hundred fucking percent it is but yeah because i took yours around the small loop yeah and 
I've hell I had a S one thousand and same shit done as your I think I may have had more done on my S one thousand. I had everything yeah. Tyler had done on mine yeah. uh, right out of the gate and I was like, Oh, this it's impressive, it's fun. Yeah. And then I rode the M just in that loop and of course I had to do my little wheelie and I was like, Holy fuck and just the uh, the way it was, it was yeah. it was fucking impressive. Yeah. For what it was. Compared yeah. to dollar for that versus the Super Legera and the SP. Yeah. I would say it's definitely in that realm. I, for sure. Compared to the Super Legera, I'd say it's a fucking bargain. It's a way better buy. I mean, because it, it's, it's, it's actually a little bit faster than the Super Legera, um, 60 to 130 wise. I mean, not, not a ton. Uh, it, it may not be after this. Uh, Brendis came out with an updated tune for the Super Legera that, that may put it under under four. But, uh, you know, either way, both bikes are fast. They're sub four. You know, they're high 360 to 130s. But where, where they're a little slower than some of the other ones with less downforce, that's where you make up for it is that they handle way better. And, and they're much more competent and stuck to the ground as far as um, those those winglets, you know, just provides so much confidence and stability and, and a noticeable level of, of, uh, you know, like I said, just confidence and stability, not to beat a dead horse, but yeah, they're, they're phenomenal. They're both, both really good bikes, but yeah, the, the M is a lot easier to ride. It's a lot more mindless. You know, the SL is, um, is, is a really cool sense of occasion, but it's something you got to kind of get ready for. And it's, it's a, it's a lot of bike to, to manage and it's kind of exhausting and and uh, there's times where that's exactly what i want and it's super rewarding to have that and there's other times where like i just want to jump on the bike and enjoy it and not have to think so fucking hard about it and and that you know the m is is the way to go for that so to me it's like i would spend way more time riding the m like that'd be like the the bike that i'd ride most days and then the super Legere would be the weekend kind of more special occasion wouldn't ride as much but when you do it's it's like holy shit that's a fucking bike you know it's just just different but that's the bike when you're fucking having one of those days you want to forget yeah. work you jump yeah. on and you fucking get get all that shit out of you yeah like you want to go exercise the fucking demons then yeah but i will say you can do that on the fucking m1000 too because i mean it's fast and capable enough to where like when you really push it like you can push that fucking bike hard you know yeah. and and still really enjoy it so it's it's a really neat kind of best of both worlds almost jekyll and hyde that way is that if you want to just cruise around town and be comfortable and and leisurely and, and it's easy and comfortable and not think and whatever you can do that but if you want to get nasty and really rip the shit out of it you can do that on it also you know and, yeah. and you can go out i mean i've gone out on bush and uh on on it a few times and you know the traffic was dying down it was later around right at sunset and uh you know fucking hammered it and really got my uh my yayas out that way too you know yeah. so it, it's a pretty pretty complete machine i love the way in a bike and a car they're the same highway we drive is two different oh yeah it's two different highways yeah and it's the same road but it's two different two highways. totally different experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah uh, that's why when i'd go to break mine in that's where i'd take it and i'd just fucking yeah push it hard yeah um uh, yeah so that's cool uh, i just know you've had so many lately that what's yeah. the one yeah i mean I, like i said i find myself uh riding motorcycles more than anything else by quite a bit just because i can actually go enjoy them you know I, I haven't put many miles on on the cars here lately because it's so hard to fucking get them out and, and do anything with them you know but, yeah yeah so. stupid ass cars which, speaking of which, you know, I'll just I'll say it here first. The seven six five is probably going to go away, which isn't going to surprise a lot of people. I don't think I I remember seeing a couple of comments. Oh, how long is Mike going to have the the fucking McLaren? Uh, it's a good car, um, but the one thing I will say that the big there's two big drawbacks for me is one is kind of like the Super Legere. It's a lot to deal with. You know, it, it's mentally a lot to fucking take in and and manage to to drive it. Uh, it also tops out um at a lower speed than than i want which i was pretty disappointed in um, so those two things combined i think for the money it's not uh it's not what i'm looking for but yeah um what i uh, what i'll probably replace it with is to be continued i'm not going to mention that yet but if it's what what i think it is or what you told me it is god damn you 
What are the two key components for canine success? That's effective training and proper nutrition. Fueled by Team Dog brings those two components to your family and best friend. The perfect nutritional balance that results in a higher mental acuity, energy, overall vitality, and even an improved appearance. Every product you will find in my company's store was born from the battlefield and not from the boardroom. Let my life's work help you become your dog's hero. Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows? Maybe that uh, won't be my jam either, and I'll get rid of that and just keep the pista and drive it. Because if right you now, do, we're going to do some talking, <laughs> uh, some negotiating. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The riding the driving the pista the past few weekends, I've been driving it to meets, fucking around. Uh, you think it's time to tell them why I've been driving the pista yeah. or wait? I, I mean, I would do it. I just you know, fucking do it. So I've been driving the Pista because the second day I had the Lamborghini, someone ran it over. And when I say that, I'll have the producer put a picture up. <coughs> Probably going to have to blur out a face, but uh, <coughs> literally ran the fucking car over. Uh, was on the way to get the oil changed and the car got ran over. Uh, it's all cosmetic and for those of you that want to know, cosmetics on a fucking Lamborghini are not cheap, especially a Performante. So it's nothing structural. The car's not totaled. It's it's just been getting fixed. And in my normal <clears throat> way of doing things, we couldn't just fix it. Yeah. We had to upgrade some shit. That's right. Uh, so we got with a company in which when we do the new reveal of what it looks like, I'll – drop that name of that company but uh i think it's gonna be a very good looking fucking car when it yeah, comes out for sure um uh, again it's all structure nothing hell i could have drove it to the repair shop if one of the radiators wasn't leaking um and i think that's the only time i've ever been upset when a car's got fucked up yeah it's usually it's like ah fuck it i'll replace it to me it's if a car gets fucked up, fuck it all the way up. Yeah. Don't just barely fuck it up. I think, too, or also, is that you only had it for two fucking days. Yeah, you know? we 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 went out the night we got them, and we fucking played. Yeah. And it was like, God damn, this thing's so fucking. And I told you, I was like, it's not the fastest fucking car I've had, but it's the most fun fucking car I've had. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, and, and as long as it took to get here and, you know, oh, all the yeah. fucking back and forth, you know, so you finally get it take it out and have fun with it one time and then it gets fucking wrecked and it's going to take, you know, six fucking weeks to fix it. And it's just like, God damn. Yeah. Six weeks has turned into <clears throat> two and a half years. Yeah. It's like two going on two months now, two and a half months. But when it's done, I think it's going to be well worth fucking waiting on. Yeah. Uh, we just, and it's not the shop's fault why it's taken so long. Part, some of the parts are special order, uh, had fucking problems with one of the other, places it went to and uh now where it's at i mean it's it's one of those things you show up and you're like god damn i didn't think it would be at this point yeah you know it's far away and if any of y'all want to know lamborghini huracan headlight is around eight grand um yeah so i'll get him to put the picture up of the car very depressing moment and i think i told mike i was like this is the only time i've ever fucking been depressed and it happened while i was sitting still wasn't my fault hers i said she was uninsured right uninsured uh <clears throat> no bullshit i had fucking i guess after getting ran over i was mind fucked and some people oh, i was ptsd bitch it's not fucking ptsd someone fucking hit me so i'm fucking scared to drive right and i was and then mike like take the pista take the pista so finally i was like the only way i'm gonna drive the pista is if you set the pace which he did and God damn, I fell in love with that fucking car. <laughs> yeah. And anytime Hard. someone would ask me, they're like, which one's better? That one. And I point at the piece to every fucking time. Yeah. That that one. Uh, is it better than the car I have? We haven't got to test that. But I can tell you for a fact, the short drive we got to do with it, trying to run out the older gas and all that fucking around, I would say they are very close cars with what's done to mine. Yeah. Stock to stock? No. <clears throat> uh the piece is just fucking fast, but what mine has done to it, yeah, I would say they're they're fucking neck and neck. They're it's gonna be fun fucking around yeah. with those two together. Yeah, 
And when we get to drive, like finally, I could tell Mike wanted me to push it a little harder the last time I drove because he sets the pace and I just follow. And anybody that was following us that day had a hell of a time trying to fucking follow us. We was fucking doing some shit. Yeah. And I'm fucking sitting there playing around with the fucking radio like it's a fucking <laughs> – Sunday stroll. Yeah. Like I did not remember that the fucking buttons were behind the steering wheel on that thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's such an easy car to drive, you know. Yeah, it, it is. And I know some of you all oh, y'all talk about the piece. That fucking car is good. Yeah. You get a chance to drive one, go fucking drive one. Go to Speed Vegas and rent it. You won't you won't regret it. No, that'd be the best money you can do. If we start doing that other thing yeah. we were talking <clears throat> about doing during the week, which we're gonna have to get producer dick in the butt over there to fucking <laughs> start doing it too. Uh, old dude, Pat, Patrick Fitzgerald over there. Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> gonna be a fucking blast. Yeah, uh, change some shit up there too. Um, let's get in. You got anything else before we get into some of these questions? Oh shit, we spent half the time talking about uh, bikes and cars already. So, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I, I don't have a bunch of shit that I wrote up because, like I said, we just had that that baby, and it, I will note this. If you want to know what your chick will look like with fake boobs, get her pregnant. Or or get her tubes tied and get the fucking fake press. It's a <laughs> lot cheaper than what I did. Uh, but chicks are fucking tough. Any dude out there that don't realize how tough chicks are, to be able to fucking do that shit. Yeah, that's no joke. Mm -mm -mm. No. No, and then they fucking can stay up all night, and I'm fucking trying to keep up with her, and I'm fucking dying. Uh, so we're going to get into these questions and answers a little bit and uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks I can surprise people with why I had all these fucking questions uh, what podcast other than your own do you listen to on a regular basis well I listen to this one and I listen to Mike's when I get a chance and the reason I listen to Mike's is to make sure producer fucking uh, Gerald Fitzpatrick yeah or is it Patrick Fitzgerald maybe it's both or it's for Monday cheese, uh, making sure things are going right. Uh, and then I, li I do listen to Clint's Can You Survive This Podcast. Um, other than that, man, we're just so busy with all the shit we got going. I don't have time to listen yeah. to anything else. And I've t said it before, when I'm leaving listening to music, I'm not listening to the words. Like I played a song my wife asked me, what's a song that I've never heard you play that you drive to? So I broke her down with a, my name is Mud. <laughs> I'm by Primus. Yeah. And she was like, really? Have you listened to this? I was like, no, what's he saying? He's like, he just keeps saying his name is Mud. I was like, well, I figured by the title it had something, but the fucking music is yeah. correct. That bass line is fucking legit. What the hell do you listen? So for me, it, it depends on the guest. Um, it, but it's, I usually, or I would say very, very rarely will I watch an entire episode of, of anything. Uh, which I know, you know, people, uh, most people are that way. But, you know, um, Sean Ryan show, Clint's Can You Survive This Podcast. Uh, sometimes Andy Stumpf on Cleared Hot will have a guest on either that I've had on or, <clears throat> or uh, you know, that I that I know he's going to do a good job interviewing. And so I'll listen to, to it. Um, Joe Rogan, same thing. Jordan Peterson. Um, but it's usually like they're clips, you know, they're 10, 15 minute clips that it's a, a specific subject or topic or whatever. Uh, Chael Sonnen, uh, also the MMA, former MMA fighter who now is a pretty, uh, popular podcast that, uh, similarly they're, they're short. So if he's talking about fight predictions or post fight wrap ups or stuff like that, sometimes if, if it's a fight I watched or, or want to watch or something like that, then I'll. I'll tune into that. So there, there are a number of other podcasts that I'll listen to, but again, just very briefly, like just little little snippets of it that way, depending on the guest. But See, I hate podcasts so much. Did you say Chael? Yeah. I listen to Chael. Yeah. He's good. Sean Ryan's good, too. Yeah. I listen to I, ju I just watched uh, Sean had a guy. It's, it's the only guest he's had on twice now, and he's a, a journalist that's been embedded with some of the Sinaloa cartel I saw that. Yeah, I mean, it's like Dateline quality shit. I mean, not not just in the production quality, um, but in the actual content of, like, video footage from meth labs in Mexico. And, like, it's just crazy uh, how how well done it is. But I'm fascinated by that. Breaking Bad was uh, is one of my favorite 
favorite shows and uh it, it's neat to see kind of the the comparison and contrast of you know what's depicted and portrayed in pop culture versus how it actually is and there there's some similarities there's some big differences uh but it was just really neat to see uh, to see that and his show is uh yeah it's just top top notch yeah, he's coming sh- back on mic drop here in a few weeks so yeah the stuff he does is and i was telling our producer uh licks ass that uh I like when I'm tired. It's ass lick. Really fucked up <laughs> names for him instead of just Todd. Uh, <laughs> Fucking Kyle. <laughs> Deal with uh, I was telling him, I was like, I want you to go watch that, uh, yeah. Sean Ryan. The, just the, from watching your episode on Sean Ryan to his evolution just <clears throat> even now, yeah. it's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah he's super uh, talented. I'd, I'd love to shadow him for a month just to watch his creativity. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the interesting thing is is he does pretty much all of it himself. Yeah. When you, you know? told me that, that changed everything. Cause yeah. It looks so good on camera that it's like, damn, who the fuck did he pay yeah. to do all that? And then yeah. you were like, he does it all. Yeah, from the when you were talking about the shopping and all that, it was like yeah. holy fuck. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, yeah, set design, the fucking camera angles, the editing, the I mean, all of it. You know, yeah. and I guess I'm wrong because I consider a podcast Spotify stuff only. You know, Spotify, iHeartRadio, things like that, yeah. to where you're listening to it. But I'm not in the car traveling as much as I used to, so I always I have two screens running at all times, and I always have youtube going which that's the show that yeah. i watch so, yeah like same that. here i don't i don't typically listen audio only to to most podcasts jocko i guess there's sometimes where um you know not a ding on jocko but just the because of the format of his video it's less appealing to watch in my opinion yeah um uh, which is fine uh, think but with all his money he could get colored <laughs> cameras I mean, I, I, that's just his his brand, his shtick, and and that's that's all good. You know, it's it's individual, it's unique, and and that's cool. But for me, I, you know, yeah, I'll always watch whatever whatever show I want to watch. I watch it on YouTube, and uh, either when I'm in my office, uh, I'll put it up up on the TV in my office uh, while I'm at my computer, or if I'm driving, I'll put it on my phone and set it in the fucking gauge cluster. Yeah, you taught me that fucked yeah. up deal. Oh, I love it, man. Like, if go. I'm on a long road trip, yeah, I'll put it right there. Fucking and watching watch car reviews heading. That, Y'all want a bitch about us driving fast? Yeah. It's safer than when we're driving fucking slow. I well, I, I will say this, too. It, it, like, try it sometime. It fucks you up. If, if you watch a POV-style car review of somebody driving fast in your gauge cluster and, and you're looking down at somebody else driving and then what you're saying back and forth, it fucks you up. I'm going to have to do it. It, it, it's a it's Dude. a total fucking trip, man. Going that, back and forth. Zone on the way home. Yeah, well, especially like there's a there's a um, I think it's a Novatech. Before they fucked with the seven six five LT, there's like a nine minute YouTube clip of a POV camera angle of them just hammering the fuck out of a seven six five LT on the autobahn, uh, getting up to you know two hundred miles an hour regularly, and and you know, and if you put that on on there and go back and forth, you about fucking run off the goddamn road. Like it's really weird. I need to try that shit. Yeah, now. yeah I do that a lot. When you'll be like, "Hey, check this out," or when I'm looking at parts, that's when I'm yeah. watching them. When I'm driving home, yeah, yeah, because I'm responsible. <clears throat> yeah, I got into watching about fucking murders and shit too lately. So that's really been <laughs> fucking with me. I don't hang out with nobody anymore. Yeah. Fucking just eating TV dinner, sitting at yeah. home, fucking in a closet. Hell yeah, and no trust. Uh, what is your best father quality? <clears throat> That's going to be hard because to me, what I find could be good, yeah. my kids could totally <laughs> fucking yeah, hate. Yeah, you'd have to ask the kids on that one. Honestly, I I agree. Like I don't, I, I don't know that I would pick one that I would say I think this is my my best quality. But I would say the one thing I try to instill in my kids is the same thing I try to live my life on. Don't start something, then give up. Yeah. You know, if if you can't do it, that's cool. I get that, but don't half ass it because ah, so and so was doing it. It was cool. Yeah. You know, yesterday what I told you I had to go do, I didn't half ass my research. I'm fucking sitting there, got my phone, a laptop, and I'm fucking like looking here, watching video, and it's some fucked up videos that I was watching to fucking get my information. Yeah. But I try not to half ass anything. If I'm gonna do something, if I'm gonna put in my time. Because one thing I did get this weekend is something Jocko said. It's the one thing we can never control is time. Yeah. That shit hit hard with me. Yeah. But 
if I'm going to put that time in that I can't get back, I'm going to make sure I put all of it in right. And I mm-hmm. want my kids to do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, you'd have to ask the kids. And our kids don't like you all, so they're not going to tell you. <laughs> what was your dad's best father quality? Uh, that his pullout game was weak. No. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, for me, I think it's it was – how and this is for both of my parents they're they're both real even keeled that way is how balanced they were in their approach towards everything you know they they were never like roller coastery in in terms of their emotions neither one of them ever were super angry and and mean and vengeful or or vindictive about anything or or punished you because they were they were pissed about something uh and on the transverse like they didn't ever act like it was their first time in the end zone either with excitement, you know, not that they were apathetic emotionally, um, but, but they were just very balanced and very appropriate in how they, they respond. And it's something that, that frankly, they're far better than, than I am um, about that because there's times where I've been, uh, I've fallen into that where my emotions have gotten the best of me with my kids and, and uh, and I was not as good as my parents were in in how they handled things. So um, that's uh, that's mine. I'm trying to think. Uh, my dad was stern, very stern. Uh, I guess he taught me how to be the man I am today through the best means he could, if that makes yeah. any kind of sense. And the way he was raised was very rough so the way we were raised was very rough and as an adult it's not how i would parent uh but i learned a lot on how not to parent but i also became who i am because of how i was parented yeah uh other than that yeah that, i don't know yeah that's it for that question dickhead move to the next one golly sometimes he's fucking like four questions up and we're still on one and this not- time Hell no, Other times terrible. you got to nudge him with a cattle right. prod. Uh, okay. We'll go back to that one. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of question. It, to me, there, there's too much in that question to explain to the to the viewer to be able to really. Uh, get, give any insight that's not going to take the rest of the episode really to, yeah. to do it. But. I'm going to say these are some of these longer ones that we're not answering. They're my fault because I should have said bullet point, which you find the most important. You know, ask short questions, short sentence, bullet point it so we can answer it quicker. Um, the full sentences, it's hard for us because, like you just saw, the pause. We both had to stop, read it, and we're going to have to break this down. <clears throat> It's not fair to everybody, so we're going to skip this one. I Don't delete it. I may answer that one out of outside. Uh, Okay, so I don't know why I do this, but I've done it all my life, and it's completely automatic. When I talk to females, I, ha- I use a soft, super kind voice. Now, I don't do this with my wife or any woman I've, I'm close with or even had romantic interest with, but it's completely automatic to the girl behind the register, a server, or, or just to say, excuse me, as I walk by. Well, to me, that's just called manners. Uh, with most any woman, especially elderly women for me, uh, or even chicks that are respectable. I mean, I'm not here, bitch. You know, I'm, if I'm holding the door and they're, thank you. I'm not like, you're welcome. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not trying to scare a motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, you're yep. welcome. You know, or don't mention it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I have a different tone when I'm talking, especially to someone I don't know because your tone's everything. And when, when you're talking to somebody. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Uh, my take is no, it does not make you a bitch. Uh, I think you're overthinking it. If anything, you overthinking it might make you a bitch. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't say that. Yeah, you're a bitch. Yeah. It, uh, no, it, it does not. Uh, I think if, if you are naturally inclined to be that way, 
go with what you have and don't think twice about it because uh, there's a reason for it. I think most women appreciate that, mm-hmm. and uh, and I would just just uh, keep with it. You probably get laid a lot because of it. They're like, that's a <laughs> nice guy right there. She'd probably be like, wonder if his tongue's that soft. Mike and Matt love the footage on the car delivery. So excited for y'all. See what I did there? Using all them information or some shit. But my question is for the buddy who was in the background who has the black hoodie on with the American flag canine image, where can an ordinary citizen purchase one of those? I don't know if it's warmer and fuzzy as to your question. Um, that uh, guy that was in there is actually Darren Niemeyer, who was the FBI canine handler uh, on the Mic Drop show a few episodes ago. Uh, I have no idea where you get that that hoodie, but uh, his contact info is in the description and uh, and in the interview. You could uh, reach out to him and ask. He he may fucking sell them. I don't know, but he he'll know where to get them. I don't. If not, they have some on uh, MikeRitland.com. They're uh, they're uh, nice. Uh, they don't say the same thing at all, though. Yeah. If you don't skip that other dude, I'm going to punch you in the fucking throat. <laughs> Colorado Police Investigation. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> so a box of human heads was stolen from a truck in Denver. Yeah, Pretty why, wild. Why, why are we even reading this? Yeah, this, this doesn't even fucking make sense. This is a goddamn statement, not a question. <clears throat> You're so getting fucking rode up after this, you motherfucker. Mid-level SUV. Hey, guys. Would love to hear your opinion on a mid-level SUV. Price range. Uh, I love this fucking dude already. He gave us fucking price range. Yeah. 50K to 75K. Would love to hear comparisons between Japanese and German slash European. BMW M3. X3M. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't think you can get the X3, but you can get the M or the XM. You, you can if it's used. Yeah, used. He yeah. didn't say no. And, used and light and lightly used. I mean, you can get one that's a 21 Touché. or even or even a 22 with a couple thousand miles on it for high 60s. Touche. Yeah, I didn't say that. But uh, to yeah. me, I, I would ask what what is your priority? Is the comparison between a Japanese, say a Toyota or you know, something like that, versus a German or European uh, is going to be the big difference. Another one I would throw in there is the Audi SQ5. Uh, it's another really good car. Uh, and again, I, I would buy both of those gently used because that's you can you can get uh, SQ5s that have you know a couple thousand miles on them that are a year old for low fifties. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not as fast as an X3M, uh, but they're fucking quick and punchy and fun to drive. Uh, I, I had one for a little over a year. So that's when you cheated on that race back to your hell. That's right. Uh, no, that was the, uh, that was when we were both in the RSQ8. And you still cheated, though. You see how you just fit, you fixed but I, that. But I still won. <laughs> uh, uh, but if you're not wanting fast, if you want reliable, <clears throat> I would go, I would look more Japanese on. I'm well, try- well, I'm trying to think. I mean, for a, I don't know what Japanese Lexus. SUV there would be at, at that price point. Yeah, I mean, I guess Lexus. The but Lexus F. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I would take an SQ5 or an X3M. Oh, yeah, there's no punch in those Lexus. My wife yeah. my wife had the Lexus. I can't remember what it's called. It's the F Sport. Fuck, I can't remember. there Because they're all some weird fucking uh, numbers. 350 F Sport, whatever it is. RX 350 F Sport. She had one of those, supposed to be their fast one. I shit you not, she got rid of that thing in fucking uh, two weeks. Yeah. Used Macan. Yeah. Used Porsche Macan. You can get a Macan S. Uh, those are fun little fucking cars. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, other than that, yeah, I mean, those those three, if you want fast, the Macan, the SQ5, and the, yeah, because the Mercedes, any of the ones I would recommend. I don't even think used you could touch them for the fifty to, not one that I would you buy. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, what the shit? Uh, what is your prepping readiness level at this moment? If nukes or nuke power plants melt down or caused by Russia, I mean, 
I don't really have one. I mean, so for me, I have uh, where my kennel facility is is kind of my uh, plan B, I guess you would say, but that's really about it uh, just because it's out in more of a uh, rural area where, you know, you can kind of work off the land hunting wise, growing food. There's, you know, water available, um, you know, and there's enough preparation on my end out there. Nothing crazy, but enough to where, uh, you know, it would be better to be there than it would be where I'm at. I'm not one to go the Mormon route of having six months of fucking supplies in my, uh, you know, pantry or cellar or whatever. Uh, but I do think, you know, you should have some, some contingency for if the shit hits the fan of at least have, have some fucking idea of what you're going to do. But I'm following Mike. My plans have now changed. I'm following Mike out to wherever the fuck he's <laughs> going. Uh, uh, that's it. Huh? Yeah. Next, next. Yeah. Next bitch. Mother. You highlight that shit. One more. Guy. Come on, Chuck. Yeah. Question for Matt. Do you follow UFO news and updates? For example, Commander David Fravor, the F-18 pilot. I do not. Uh, Louis Elizondo. By the way, I suck at fucking pronouncing names. And the DIA officer who headed up the Pentagon program. If so, what are your thoughts? I do not. Um, I am a believer in... I'm not really a believer but i I try to stay open-minded about all kinds of things because even some shit hit me the other night about the bible type shit uh maybe get into that off the air and tell you uh but i I asked my wife about it and her face was like i never thought of it like that but anyways ufos again we can't be that weird to think we're the only life forms in all these universes we just can't Now, do I think there's UFOs all over here? With today's technology, I have to agree with Mike. I think that shit would have been exposed way before now. Uh, I don't know if they're on the same level as we are, that they're just going, you know, as far as they can out in space. Who knows? There may be. Fucking Elon Mm. Musk could be one of the motherfucking aliens. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't follow it that close. Lately, I'm on murders and stuff, so. A uh, question for me. I know you don't follow UFO news. Well, if you know that, how do you know that? Exactly. How do you know that I don't follow UFO news? You alien fuck. Right? Is it because you don't hear me talking about it in saying that I follow UFO news? Uh, I would say I uh, I loosely follow it. Um, what What would it take or who could convince you that something not of human origin has been here. Well, uh, it would take proof. That's it. You know, not I saw some shit, not I was abducted, not the best fucking storyteller in the world to uh, convey that just trust them that it's happened. Like, just prove it. That, that's all it's going to take. You know, it's I mean, it's pretty simple. Fucking prove it the same way you prove anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Louis Elizondo does long form podcast interviews and would probably love to talk to an open-minded skeptic. I would be happy to have him on Mm -hmm. uh, and talk to him about it. But, you know, to me, again, it's like, it's like having a pastor on who's trying to convince me that Christ is real, right? Is, Is it to a certain extent is that if you can't show me, then you're not you're not convincing me of anything, you know. So, like, does he have proof? If he does, show it to me. Like to have him on a four hour interview where we sit down and talk about it, that doesn't prove a fucking thing to me, right? That that I mean, it doesn't prove the existence. What it proves is that you've got a guy who maybe is very convincing, uh, who's obviously very dedicated uh, and disciplined in trying to convince people, but. Again, it's to me, it's real simple. Fucking prove it. And if you can prove it, then I'll believe it. If you can't, then I don't. It's, it's, that, it's that easy. Hey, go up to that, uh, up up to the one named after a, a Cadillac. Oh, hey, <clears throat> go up to the one below that. Yeah, and then we'll do that one too. Those two. Fuck this kid. Uh. Opinion on the Mercedes EQS. 
fail. I, yeah, I, I think it's a, a fail. If you look at the, I don't like it. If you look at the history, and especially what we found out, when was this question wrote? Sham a month ago. Uh, was it about a month ago that we were looking into that Tesla Mercedes thing? Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Look into that. You know who you are to ask the question. Look into that uh, Tesla Mercedes uh, thing. It'll really open your eyes on the Mercedes EQS. I, I think anything electric sucks dick. Uh, even vibrators. Uh, Matt, what concerns and worries do you have about having a kid at the age we are at? Uh by we, I, I know this gentleman, and he's an old fuck stick. Uh, I'm older, too. I'm 42 years old and just had a baby last week. I will say do it while you're young. It's a young man's game. Because, like, some of the realizations that hit me that I would text you, it's like, holy fuck, you know. Uh, technology's great now. I would say that. If you're lazy, out of shape like me having a kid, it's way easier to do. Uh, but, man, it's a lot of work, a lot more work than I fucking remembered. To me, the the thing, I know this was geared towards him and not me, but me thinking about it, having been through it, uh, you know, 15-plus years ago, the yeah, that's the big difference for me is is being tired. Is it, you know, at the end of the day now versus when they were little, little, little kids? is vastly different you know my fucking battery was uh, a lot more chargeable back then whereas now it's like motherfucker i need to go to bed and, and if my sleep gets interrupted like i'm a fucking train wreck the next day and and just can't mm-hmm. can't do what i need to do the way i need to do it how i used to be able to you know mm-hmm. but that's that's really my only concern is is that is, is being able to physically do it without it just crushing me and i guess the, the other concern is is just, you know, thinking about, like, if I had a kid right now, as an example, you know, I'd be in my fucking 60s when they're graduating high school, you know, so it's like the thought of seeing them in their 30s and 40s, it's like, you're probably not going to see them, you know, and it's like, I I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that, you know, I know you didn't ask me, but no, and it's, it's, no, that's a legit concern, too, and we've talked about that amongst me and you, hell, seeing my daughter with, with him and that's one of the messages i sent mike looking at my daughter with my son my daughter will be my age when my son is 18 yeah and it's like holy fuck yeah it's weird you know the one thing i can 100 percent already thank my son for is he brought my daughter back around which i hadn't seen my daughter in a year and a half uh who thought me just being a fucking asshole that i can be but uh Holding my ground again, like I told <laughs> earlier about being a dad, be be stern. Uh, but it's hard. I will say about the energy thing, it's weird, and and you know this because you've experienced it. When you're a dad, it's a little bit different because if my dog wakes me up, fuck that dog. At that point, that dog in the next twenty four hours, man, you ain't cool. You just fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. your kid wakes you up it changes things and especially when they're babies you can be like okay i forgive you you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you, and yeah. the power naps you know because i know you know how to do it but a, a normal sleep i want six to eight hours good fucking rim sleep yeah but now it's like i'm pushing those fucking hour hour and a half of getting the most out of a power naps in between i can uh but it's still a fucking ass whipping. Yeah, I mean, to, and to me, that's the problem is that knowing knowing the amount of focus and bandwidth, resource wise, that it takes having a, a brand newborn child. I mean, that's mostly what you're consumed with, you mm-hmm. know, for the first couple of years, really. Yeah, you know, and and it's like thinking of going through that now with all the other shit I have going on. It's like something has to give you can't do i i can't i couldn't do both you know like yeah. if i was going to have a kid right now it's like it, it it would detract so much from all of the other things that i'm doing to where it's just like man yeah there's just no way i could do both you know i would um, say and i told my wife this today she didn't even know this but as soon as i saw the baby my anxiety and depression shot up tenfold from what it normally is which 
I, a lot of people don't know, I run on very high anxiety levels. And it's because I put on so much shit that I'll take on and I'll try to conquer it. Well, now I'm looking at all the shit I've put on my plate to this point. It's like, fuck. Yeah. You know, and that's how one of the texts I sent you was like, what if I fail? If I fail at all these other things, I fail at raising him right, you know? So, yeah, my anxiety levels have been fucked through the roof lately. But uh, I'll adapt. I adapt to everything the best I can. Uh, hopefully I'll get my stress reliever back here pretty soon and uh, get out on the street. Yeah, but if you're going to have a kid, you got to think long picture. Don't think of the now. Don't think of how cool it is to make a chick happy, to have a baby. If you're not ready, because that's a commitment you need to make as a man to fucking raise that kid 18 to 20 years, don't be selfish. Uh, hell, we both raised ours or raising ours and yeah it's a lot of work yeah it's a ton of work it's a full-time job yeah and some. these fucking single moms out there they get mad fucking props yeah that work and yeah i mean i don't know how the fuck they do it yeah. honestly hats off to them fuck that yeah something like i told was telling y'all before we were recording some of the shit my wife's doing right now yeah. i'm like fuck yeah well she's young and can handle it yeah that's kind of <laughs> what i told her you're young now that you'll know what it's like to be a single mom yeah. um now, guys, so that's it for today's episode. You don't have nothing else, do you? No, it just burns when I pee. That's it. Oh, that shit will go that's away. Have I you know. tried shoving ointment up there? Oh, yeah. Like, squirt it in? All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Peace, fuck sticks. <laughs>